The Chicago Bears have released their first unofficial depth chart. We're going to take a look at that. Who's going to look at some things that the Bears need to take a look out for against the Tennessee Titans. And uh, Bears Goggles on list the five more, most important Bears heading into next season that the Bears cannot lose. We're going to talk about all that and more right after this. You are now tuned in to Chicago Bears Central, your number one place for all Chicago Bears news and content. What's going on, Bears fans? Welcome to another episode of Chicago Bears Central, your number one spot. For everything Chicago Bears related, I'm the host, Eric Hayes, but more importantly, you guys can follow the channel at Shy Bears Central on every social media platform we happen to be on. With that being said, let's go ahead and get into this content for today, y'all. So first up, we want to talk about the Bears' first unofficial depth chart that was released today. Not really too many questions there. We do have the answer on who's going to be that starting edge on the opposite side of Montez Sweat, so we'll get to that when we get to the defensive line. So no surprises. Quarterback. We got Caleb Williams and Tyson Bajan. Uh, Tyson Bajan as the reserve, Caleb Williams as the starter there. Running back DeAndre Swift with Khalil Herbert, Roshan Johnson, and Travis Homer listed as the reserves there. Uh, for fullback, Kari Blassingame, who came back onto the roster. Wide receiver, DJ Moore and Keenan Allen listed as the starters. With Romo Dunze, Tyler Scott, Valus Jones, DeAndre Carter listed there as the reserves. We know that Rome's going to be in that slot, though. You're not an official starter, but he's going to be playing a lot. At tight end, Cole Komet with Gerald Ever backing him up. Mercedes Lewis behind those two guys. The starting off offensive line, Braxton Jones, Tevin Jenkins at left guard, Braxton at left tackle, Coleman Shelton as center, Nate Davis as the right guard, and Darnell Wright as the right tackle there. The reserves there, Karen Amagaje, Ryan Bates, Doug Kramer, Bill Murray, and Matt Pryor all listed there as the reserves at their, at their respective positions. The edge. Montez Sweat and Demarcus Walker listed as the edge rushers there. There are some question on if somebody, if like Austin Booker may have passed him up, but it looks like they're going with Demarcus Walker as of right now. This could still change before Sunday's game, but that's right there. The backups, Daryl Taylor, Austin Booker, Dominic Robinson, Daniel Hardy. Now, I'm a bit surprised that Dominic Robinson is listed ahead of, uh, ahead of Daniel Hardy. That's just my personal opinion. I know some Bears fans are going to agree with that one. At defensive tackle, your starters. Andrew Billings, Javon Dexter, with the reserves being Zach Pickens and Chris Williams there, who was recently acquired. Linebacker, your starters, Tremaine Edmonds and TJ Edwards, with Jack Sanborn, uh, Emin Angog, Anbog Bingmiga, Bingmia, I always mispronounce his name, and Noel Sewell as your reserves there. Cornerback, Jalen Johnson, Tyreek Stevenson, and Kyler Gordon as your nickel. And then you have Terrell Smith, Jalen Jones, and Josh Blackwell as the backups there at safety. No surprises, Jaquan Brisker, Kevin Bayard, with Jonathan Owens and Elijah Hicks being the reserves there. And then as your specialist, you got Cario Santos as the kicker, Torrey Taylor as the uh, punter, and uh, Scott Daly, who's stepping in for Pat Scales, as the long snapper. With the kick returner, Velis Jones uh, or uh, DeAndre Carter is the way that is listed as kick returner, and at punt returner, DeAndre Carter or Velis Jones listed there. So that's your unofficial depth chart that was released by the Chicago Bears today. Like I said, no major surprises at there at all for me. Uh, you know, we were all kind of hoping or, or looking to see what was going to happen at that edge. But they go with the veteran and Demarcus Walker. But keep in mind, with Demarcus Walker being able to go to the inside and how Eric Washington likes to rotate that defensive line, you're going to see a lot of other players as well there on the edge. So if you're a guy that was hoping for Austin Booker to pull it out or anything like that, don't be too shocked right now. They're still going to get a lot of opportunities in an Eric Washington coach defense. And, you know, to really see how Daryl Taylor and Austin Booker really do step in as the first two reserves listed as well and how they perform, they're going to get a lot of the snaps there. And I think Eric Washington is going to have a lot of different interesting combinations that he can use there at that defensive line position. So overall, really excited about uh, the start of football coming up this Sunday for sure. And that means that the Bears are facing off against the Tennessee Titans. And what are the questions coming in for the games? What's some of the things that the Bears have to look out for in that game and it's going to have to come down to how good is this defense? I keep saying it. It comes down to it. How good is this defense? The Chicago Bears were the worst team in the league as far as defending passes to running backs last year. So is that something that, you know, the Bears have solved with some of the additions that they've made, having that linebacker core fully healthy, another year of continuity between most of that defense as well? Is that going to be something that they're better at um, also in a case like this? And let's see. If the Bears can be better at defending passes to running backs, which they're pretty solid in run defense last year, if they can be better at, at defending the passes. That was one way that teams were able to kind of overcome that. So that's going to be something to look at for this team as well. Uh, as well as 
the uh, Tennessee Titans uh, defensive line and how that, that matches up against the Chicago Bears offensive line. One of the biggest questions a lot of people still have for this Bears team is how good is that offensive line going to be going to stand up, especially on the interior of that offensive line. And so we didn't really get to see a lot of Nate Davis and Tevin Jenkins playing out there, both healthy at the same time last year. So we're hoping that that uh, coming into this is going to help that as well. You want to, we want to try to avoid injuries. Of course, it's Tevin Jenkins and Nate Davis has to be, you know, he's been healthy and at practice uh, for consistently for a few weeks now, maybe even a month. And so, you know, with that uh, case, we're going to take a look at that. And Tennessee Titans, their interior defensive line is no joke. Jeffrey Simmons uh, is, is a guy who's leading that interior defensive line. He's one of the best interior pass rushers in the game of football. So it's going to be an interesting test on that. They have Sebastian Joseph Day as well, who's a really good run stopper in that case as well. And so, how this uh, Chicago Bears offensive line, they're going to get a solid enough test against the Tennessee Titans. I still have them winning this game, but both in how we pass, how we run the ball, the success that we're able to have in that area, we're going to face a nice test right away. And so that's something to really look out for. Don't overlook Javondre Sweat as well in the, in a draft like this who was in the second round. And so, you know, we'll see who's who's how that goes for this Chicago Bears team. But that offensive line is definitely something. I'm sorry, yeah, the offensive line for the Bears and how they match up against that defensive line of the Titans is going to be one of the more interesting matchups to watch in week one just because it shapes up to be a strength of the Titans and something that we're concerned is going to be a weakness for the, for the offense of the Chicago Bears. Not necessarily outright, but there is a bit of a sign for that. Now, of course, with that, the Chicago Bears and the interior defensive line of us and how they go up against the Titans' rebuilt offensive line. Listen, this is going to be a matchup of the trenches, and I think overall – in this first game to see how those trenches uh, uh, went out is going to be important. The Titans have invested in their trenches heavily this past offseason. And while the Bears haven't made necessarily some of the big-time investments that some Bears fans rightfully so want to see, it's going to be an interesting group to see as well how the Bears do that. Listen, Javon Dexter is one of the players to look out for, I think, this year as well. We've talked about that a lot. And so how Dexter matches up against that Titans offensive line is going to be big there as well. So we're really looking out for that in this game against the Tennessee Titans also. And then the secondary. My favorite, and, and I think the position group that's going to be most important and probably the most consistent for the Chicago Bears next season is that secondary. And how does that secondary stand up? The Bears are hopefully going to have one of the best secondaries in the game of football. But listen, they're getting some work this game. You got D-Hop there. You got Calvin Ridley. You got Tyler Boyd. Boyd all added to the mix there as well. And that's going to be an important matchup. Tyreek Stevenson, Jalen Johnson, they're going to get a nice share of, of work there. And to see how Kyler Gordon in that slot also helps out on like Tyler Boyd, who's he's probably going to be matched up with a lot. This is going to be a really big test for a lot of the areas that we're looking to see growth from from the Chicago Bears this uh, from this past offseason. And that's something that I'm really looking out for. Kevin Ridley, uh, you know, we'll see who he's going to be, if he's if he, how he shapes up and kind of improves as a player as well. But now that he's moving to the number two role, that can make him a lot more dangerous for that Tennessee Titans team. So I think. The secondary of the Bears and our cornerback crew, they're going to get a lot of work against the Tennessee Titans, and we're going to get to see how they've developed as well. And then lastly, the Chicago Bears pass rush and how, how Will Levis is. Like, is Will Levis real or not? And how he matches up against, against Kayla Williams. That's something that's going to be an interesting kind of duel there between quarterbacks, even though we know they're not going up against each other while they're out there on the field at the same time. But, like, it's going to be an interesting matchup. And listen. The Tennessee Titans have tried to give Will Levis protection by in, in, increasing the trenches, improving that wide receiver core as well, and we're going to get to see how the Bears come up against that and can we get to Will Levis consistently and then how Caleb Williams comes up against his first official duel of quarterbacks in the regular season in the NFL. It's every snap now. It's no more preseason. It's not you only playing a handful of snaps. You're in there every down for, your offensive, uh, for the offensive side of the ball. So to see that matchup between Caleb and Will Levis is one that I'm really excited to see and how it works out, and we'll see what the development is there. But let me know what you guys think on that. When you look at this game against the Tennessee Titans as we get closer to it, what are some of the biggest things and matchups that you're looking for? What are some of the biggest signs for concern? What are you worried about? What are you not worried about? What do you think the Bears' biggest strengths are going to be against the Tennessee Titans? Let us know all that down below. With that said, I want to get into this article from Bears Goggles On in which they said the top five players the Bears cannot afford to lose in 2025. All right, so to get into this list, let's get into what we got. First up here, they say that one of the Bears that the, the one of the Bears players that they the team can't afford to lose is Darnell Wright. 
And when you look at it, I think that makes a lot of sense. Darnell Wright, the rookie from last year, the Bears drafted him to start improving their uh, offensive line. And Darnell Wright is an important piece of that team going forward. You can't deny that. And I think overall, um, you know, with with Darnell Wright and, you know, not really having the best depth behind him, we do have some good depth pieces, but their depth that can fill in, not necessarily depth that you want to see start in for that. And Darnell Wright, who became one of the better rookie offensive linemen last year, yeah, we got some people like Kieran Amagaje, Matt Pryor, who can definitely fill in for him that I think could be solid. And Kieran Amagaje, I think long-term the Bears are hoping he's going to develop into a starter as well. But I think overall you really want uh, Darnell Wright to stay healthy for as much as long as he can this season, not only to just provide that protection so that he can continue down his path of development as well. Next up, they have Montez Sweat and how he's, in, in, that direct quote here, irreplaceable for the Chicago Bears. And here's the thing. I think that I agree with that. Um, you know, while we do have some people that can fill in, right, we saw, though, what this defensive line was last season before Montez Sweat. We weren't getting pressure consistently on the quarterback. And while we added people like Daryl Taylor who can get that, Austin Booker shapes up to be solid, but it's a rookie year. He's still raw, things like that. Uh, it all kind of lynches on Montez Sweat and how important he he is for this Bears defensive line. You can't deny that. And I think overall, he's the one pass rusher on this team that you can look at and pencil in for close to, if not more than double-digit sacks. And so because of that, yeah, Montez Sweat is not a guy that you can overlook. And it's, the fact is that he's not just his pass rush. One of the reasons why the Bears went out and got that is that while he's great in pass rush and getting to the quarterback as well, let's not slight on Montez Sweat in the running game at all either, right? So while Montez Sweat can get sacks, and that is a big part of it, he also puts pressure on that rush game, which is going to be big for the Chicago Bears as well. So, you know, it is what it is when it comes down to that, and we'll see how that continues to develop overall. But I do think without Montez Sweat on that defensive line, this is going to be this would be a difficult season for the Chicago Bears to consistently get to the quarterback. They got more, I think they got more ability to get to the quarterback than what they had before Montez Sweat came here last year, but it still would not be the same as what it's going to be without it. Next up, they list DJ Moore. And I, I can understand where they come with that. DJ Moore, they have enlisted as DJ Moore is the straw that stirs the drink on offense. And there's a lot of reason to believe that. Now, while we got players like Keenan Allen and even drafted Romo Dunze, and this wide receiver core is in a, in a lot better place than it was last season without, with, if we did not have DJ Moore, DJ Moore is still the guy. He's the guy that has the best chemistry with uh, Kayla Williams. We know reportedly they say Tyler Scott, but he, you know, he's going to have middle school chances out there. But DJ Moore is such an important part of this. But that's not to overlook the other wide receivers here as well. Keenan Allen and his route running being a big target for the Chicago Bears as well. I think he's going to be really important in the red zone. But in that down-to-down -down offense, I think that's going to be really important as well for DJ Moore to be locked in there. And so you can't overlook that. DJ Moore is a huge part of the Chicago Bears offense. And the fact that they called him the, the, the straw that stirs the drink, I understand it. Next up, they have Javon Dexter listed here. And, you know, initially seeing this list, I thought, why, why Javon Dexter? Uh, you know. While we do think he's going to have shape up to have a big season, is he that important? And I think you got to say yes. He's a second-round pick. He's also the three-tech that Matt Eberflus has been clamoring for. And I think if you don't have that, the depth behind him, like Chris Williams is solid, right? Zach Pickens hasn't shown a whole lot. I still have a lot of hope for Zach Pickens overall. But Javon Dexter, if he's truly making this leap like a lot of Bears that we've heard from insiders and things like that, take that with a grain of salt. But if he is... And, and just his production and getting pressure. It may not be the number of sacks right away, but getting pressure, being solid in that run game. If, if he's truly what we need him to be on paper, it's definitely going to be a big season for Javon Dexter as well in the Chicago Bears uniform. And we just don't have people that are really ready to step in and kind of give the, the combination of skill set that Javon Dexter has. And you even look at how Justin Jones was much better after the acquisition of Montez Sweat. Javon Dexter starting off now with that, having that, more, a more solid overall defensive line, and hopefully that equates to more production for Javon Dexter, especially next year as well. And then lastly, they said it's all about Kayla Williams, and I would say I agree with that. Like, this is the number one overall pick in the draft. It's going to be all eyes on Kayla Williams and how he ends up shaping out for the Chicago Bears team. What does he turn into? That's going to be an important part of this, and we'll see. Kayla Williams is is one of the biggest stories, if not the biggest thing to watch for the Chicago Bears team, outside of wins, right? We all want wins, but what Kayla Williams and how he develops, how he goes and grows through his mistakes in the upcoming year is the most important thing this season to see, and it is something to look. People want Kayla Williams to be a game changer. Make no mistake about it. A lot of the new eyes that are going to be on the Chicago Bears are going to be looking at Kayla Williams and what he has and what he's learned over the course of this 
of this training camp period. We've seen him. He's been named as a captain. We've heard what he's how he's grown as a locker, how he's commanded the huddle, the locker room, things like that. And it's all about how much of that do we see now in reality for Caleb Williams and what he turns into. And I think overall, Caleb Williams' growth and development this season, it's the thing to look out for. It's the thing to, to see what we have in Caleb. And, you know, I don't know if we're going to see it all or have the outright answer this season, but Bears fans are hoping. We finally got our quarterback. We finally got our QB of the future. We finally got our guy. And let's hope that that's the case for Caleb Williams, man. Uh, ultimately, I'll say this when it comes to Caleb. He has a great opportunity, and he has been put in a great spot as far as, you know, there's still some questions on the offensive line for sure, but the weapons that he has at his disposal and an offensive coordinator that is going to develop him. And so, you know, let's see what we have in Caleb Williams, and I hope that he's, he's everything that he's shaped up to be, everything that Bears fans are hoping that he is going to be, because if he is, this season is just laying the foundation. The sky's the limit at that point if the Bears finally get their quarterback, and let's hope that that's the case. It's been so many years of hoping and wishing what this Bears team can do. So many years of hoping that we finally got our quarterback. So many different quarterbacks, from Jay to Mitch to Justin. So many, so many guys that we've hoped, and they've made their move. This front office has went out and got the, the their guy now at quarterback, and they went out and put players around him and put a team around him that we hope. And so let's hope that that's the case. This is a Bears team that. Over the course of this season, man, they're going to face so many tests. They're going to have so many, hopefully, questions answered. And it really, a lot of it comes down to how much Caleb Williams can develop in this year one and how much this team outside of Caleb Williams helps put him in a, in a great position. And so let's hope that that's the case, man. And overall, I'm really excited. And also, let's give some props to Ryan Poles. Before I go today, let's talk about this job that Ryan Poles has done over his time running the Chicago Bears. It has been great. Not everything has been perfect. Not everything has worked out. Not everything has been as seamless. Not every, the work ain't done yet. But Ryan Poles has done such a good job to pull us out of where we were as a franchise and put us on a much better and more sustainable path. That's the thing, a sustainable path with the amount of young players that we have here. This, this is, so, looks like something that can be sustainable for a long time. Like I said, looks like. Until we see it for sure, I won't say for sure. But this seems like we're on that path of getting to that thing where we have something sustainable. And with what Ryan Poles has already shown and how he looks towards the future, how he builds, those type of things, we'll continue to see what that turns into, man. I think that overall Ryan Poles is just immaculate, bro. Immaculate. I love the job that Ryan – I love a GM that you can look at and say he's probably planning for this. That's We haven't always had that. That is foreign in a lot of ways to us Bears fans. And the fact that – he has brought this here, him and the job that Kevin Warren is doing. Yeah, we're worried about the stadium and all those things when it comes. But look, when you look at the job that this front office and Ian Cunningham, he gets some absolute credit to this as well. When you look at the secondary that we have that could be one of the best in football and how young that secondary is. When you look at the linebacking core that he put together after uh, letting Roquan Smith walk away. When you look at bringing in Montez Sweat and, and that defense and what that defense can be, it's great. Then you turn around and look at the offense, getting Darnell Wright in here right uh Braxton Jones is still a young solid tackle in this league and I think he still has a lot of room for growth we'll see what happens in that uh we'll see what happens with Tevin as well but then the weapons the, the the wide receiver core that we have here the tight ends that we have here it's all been all kind of leading to this and now we're getting to the point and to the place of having real football ahead of us and now it's the speculation is going to be over it's no more speculating that's going to need to be done it's about putting it on the football field and seeing what we have there and let's hope that we have things that we can all celebrate throughout this. I love you guys, man. Make sure you guys are following the show at Shy Bear Central. You can send us any feedback, questions, comments, concerns. Chicago Bear Central at gmail.com. Lastly, if you want to leave a text message and our voicemail for the mailbag, the number to do so, 773-270-2799. Oh, I'm sorry. That's the wrong number. 773-242-9336. We are the number one spot for everything Chicago Bears related. And like I liked in every episode on, Chi Town up, but bear down. Love you guys. Peace, y'all. This has been a presentation of the Break Break Media. Media.